All right, let's dive into an example that illustrates the usefulness of some of these utility methods that are exposed in GSAP 3. So the goal here is to eventually get to the point where the mouse position is linked to the background color so that as we move our mouse to the far left of the screen, it'll be red. To the far right of the screen, it will be blue. And then it'll just kind of transition in between. So I've got this uh, method already wired up here, this on move that is just kind of uh, feeding the mouse X into this display method so that as I move my mouse here, you'll see that it's just kind of printing out the core, the X coordinate of the mouse. Okay, great. So let's start with the, uh, the snapping utility. So we can start with uh, gsap.utils.snap and then the first thing that we feed in would be the snapping increment. So let's say that we want to snap to the closest increment of 50. And then if we feed in the mouse X, then it will immediately spit back the, uh, the snapped value. So we're assigning that to this variable name value and then just feeding it back into the display. So you can see that when I run this, as I move my mouse, it's only increments of 50. Perfect. Okay, but since this is feeding in, it's doing it, it's running this on every single mouse move, and it's the same number every time, it's the same snapping value every time. So uh, what I think would be more useful is to uh, ha build, uh, build a snapping method that will return a function instead. So what I'm gonna do is create a variable named snap50, and then I'm running the same code as down here, but I'm not feeding in any mouse X position. Since I'm not doing that, the, uh, the method will return a function. And so down here, what we can do is just reference that function, snap 50, and then we just feed in the actual value where normally we would do it after here. Um, that's what we're feeding in right here to the function. Now this, the snap function is going to uh, remember that we fed in 50 up here. So that's kind of like locked in so that when we call it down here, it's going to snap mouse X to the closest 50. So again, if I run it, we should see no real difference. Perfect. It's just increments of 50. Okay. Now, what if we wanted to get a little bit more fancy and let's say we wanted to snap it to the edges so that within, whenever the mouse gets within 50, um, pixels of the edge of the screen, either edge, the left edge or the right edge, we'd snap. And so the snapping uh, utility method can actually um, accept an object. And when that object has, you know, values, uh, it's an array. Um, and this can be any number of values. But in this case, we're just going to feed in zero, which would be the mouse coordinate on the left edge of the screen. And then uh, the windows inner width, which would be the far right edge of the screen. And then we're feeding in a radius of 300. And that's just telling it that whenever th the value that we feed in is within a radius of 300 of either of these values, either zero or whatever the inner width of the window is, which in this case it's 1440, um, then it will snap. Otherwise, it will do no snapping whatsoever. So if I replace snap 50 with snap edges and run this, then we're going to see that kind of in the middle of the screen, there's no real snapping. But once I get to within 300, see how it's snapped to the 1440? And then if I go to the far left of the screen, we have the same kind of snapping effect. Once we get really close to 300, boom, it snaps to zero. Um, again, this can have any number of values. So we got this cool snapping functionality. What if we want that the snapping or the, uh, the values in the middle of the screen here to be snapping to 50 like we had before? Well, that's fine. We can have this wrapped in snap 50 so that the results of that are snapped as well. So let's run this 
and then we should see that in the middle here, they're snapping to 50, but as soon as we get close to the edge, it snapped to within the closest 50 of the edge as well. All right, perfect. Um, now in this case, I actually don't want the snapping to 50 anymore. Uh, in fact, I can probably get rid of that altogether. I just wanted to show you that as a little demo. Um, but what we do want to have happen is we want to, uh, we have this range of values that, you know, are going from the, the far left to the far right, which is, you know, from zero to 1440-ish. Well, in this case, it's 1450 because we have that other snapping, but that's removed now. Um, okay, so we want to kind of map between two ranges, uh, which is, of course, what the uh, the GSAP utility of uh, map range is for. So let's create another value uh, variable, and we'll call it width to progress. And we're calling the map range uh, function here, and we're feeding in. So these first two values would be the input range. So between zero and then whatever the width of the window is. And so in this case, again, 1440. And then we're going to map that to a value between zero and one, such that when the mouse is right in the middle of the screen, uh, that would be mapped to 0.5, because that would be halfway between zero and one. So again, very useful. Since we're not feeding in a fifth parameter, it's um, going to return a function just like the snap one did. So many of these methods you can use to return a number right away by feeding in uh, a value, or you can not feed in the value and then it will automatically return a function that you can use later on. Okay, so if I take this and I'm, um, if I wrap that around the snapping function, then let's see what we get. So as I move my mouse, you'll see that we get it translated into, see how it's snapping to one? Because again, we have that snap to edges so that as soon as we're getting within 300 pixels of the right edge of the screen, it's snapped to that. So that's a value of one. And then if we get close to the other edge, we have that snapping occurring as well. So of course, if I removed the snapping, then we would see that it would go, you know, all the way to the edges. Um, it's taking just a second to refresh here. But um, the next thing that we're going to want to do here, I'll just de demonstrate this here, get very close to the left edge, it's almost a zero, and we hit zero, and then all the way to the other edge, we get to one at the very, very edge. Okay, so let's create, let's use the uh, interpolate method because we want to map these values to a color and hopefully you've watched the other video about the interpolate method but we can just feed in just about any two values in this case we're going to feed in two colors um, kind of a reddish color uh, as the start and a bluish color for the end there and again since we're not feeding in a progress value to this function directly, it's instead of returning a number, it's going to return a function that we can then use later on. So let's take this and we can use all of our functions to uh, apply to the. Uh, sorry, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of things going on here. So basically, the we're taking the mouse x. We're feeding into the snap edges. The results of that we're feeding into the width to progress, which is going to translate that into a progress value between zero and one, which is what the interpolate or uh, interp color method is waiting for. Um, again, that needs a value between zero and one, and then that's going to interpolate the color and, and return the results of that and assign it to the background color. So if we want to, what we could do is, um, let's just set the value to this right away so that we don't see the, uh, the other value printed out to the screen. Here we go. So that's gonna be on the screen. Let's hold off on, 
applying it yet. And we'll run this and we'll see there should be an RGBA value that gets returned. And there it is. So again, we've got that snapping involved here. And that's perfect. Okay, so let's see what happens when we actually apply it to, here we'll just feed the value in here. Run this, and now we should have this, you know, right in the middle is kind of purplish, go towards the edge, we got the snapping occurring, and then the other edge, we have that snapping occurring as well. It's easy to remove that snapping if we want to, but it's kind of a cool effect. And the last thing that I'm going to illustrate is the uh, the pipe utility because we have this wrapping going on which can get a little confusing over time as you add more and more. So the the whole purpose of the the pipe method is to kind of organize things a little bit. So what we're going to do is create a new variable just called width to color and the pipe utility method, you just feed in the various um, functions that you want it to run in order. So in this case, what it'll do is run, we'll feed in a value and then it'll run, it'll feed that into the snap edges function. And then whatever is returned by that function gets fed into the width to progress function. And whatever is returned by that one gets fed into interpret color. And then since there's no more after that, it's just gonna return that value. So this gives us a nice way to kind of organize things. And so what we could do is get rid of all of this and replace it with that. And so now all we have to do is move our mouse around and we have all of those functions being run in the proper order. The code is kind of cleaned up a bit. And uh, hopefully you see that these utility methods can be uh, really useful and uh, enjoy.